Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Bishes RV, heating things up, I guess, with the newest thing for member. I don't know why I felt the need to come off so strong in that, but here we are. Um, this is their 170 MBH, and I don't know that I just want to call it a bunkhouse, and I'd like you folks to weigh in on this, because yes, it does have a couple bunks, but you can use it as so much more than that. Instead of just the common family bunkhouse camper, this could be like a family adventure camper. Um, it's got a, a cargo bunk that flips up where you could easily load a couple folding e-bikes in there. Like I've personally tested that on smaller campers like a wolf pup with that cargo bunk. You could definitely fit two of those in here. But that's the thing, uh, especially you factor in that cargo bunk along with the 60 by 80 true queen Murphy bed that's gonna be greater for taller people like me. And then the fact that they went with a sofa instead of a dinette for the full-time fixed seating. And you've created something here that could work just as well for a solo adventure type person as it would for a family camper. Now, the whole chassis, the structure, the suspension on this is so different from virtually anything else that you find out there. This is something that is built for long hauls and long-term ownership. It has that true trailing arm off-road suspension package, a heavier chassis that is uh, different from almost anything else in the marketplace. Uh, they have recently done testing on members. They are officially zero to 100 degree rated, or you may call them four seasons or whatever you wanna call them, but they are passing the tests. They are doing the things differently and they're doing everything that people have been looking for. And I am so excited to see what you guys think about this. I think it could work just as well in the parks as off the grid. And I think it could be uh, more than just a off pavement camper with the suspension, the chassis and the body structure, plus the ability to swap out the hitch for a lock and roll articulating hitch. I think you could actually take this on some serious off-road trails. So the thing with this one is I really kind of struggled to figure out how I wanted to go about this. And I think I'm actually going to do it almost backwards from what I do traditionally in a floor plane like this. Um, normally I'd show it in sofa mode, then Murphy it up. I'm going to start it in bed mode. Because remember, that's a 60 by 80 queen. And since there's no slides or anything, if you don't care about the Murphy bed function, you could easily just use it as a full-time queen bed. Now, if you've got some extra seating needs during the day, you could certainly put the bed away as it were. You got the big stargazer skylight above. Um, as long as we're talking about that, there's something I want to point out for you here. We're going to talk a little bit more about this outside, but if you look at this, these are not the uh, traditional Euro windows you've seen on some of the other embers. Um, there's a little bit of a shortage on those. They've swapped to uh, uh, dual pane uh, frameless windows that tilt open for airflow. But that's the thing is they're still using something that is dual pane to give you um, like the, the extra sound dampening and whatnot to still enhance that experience that you're expecting when you look at something like an Ember RV. However, that big stargazer skylight on top is still that uh, Euro style uh, window. And it kind of throws people off on these sometimes if you're not familiar with these, because we don't see them as much in the in the American market. You look at it and say, well, if I open it for airflow, there's no screen. Well, you've got uh, like a, you know, a sun block out shade there. And then you've got your day shade, which acts as your bug screen up here. So you can kind of pick and choose how you're going to use this thing right here. Now, <clears throat> with the TV pivoted out like that, I get how it looks kind of uh, intrusive. But remember, this is a double sofa model. So you do, like, you can... Most RVs with this floor plan, they do have TV hookups on that wall, but most RVs with this floor plan are, are budget campers that you don't tend to put a TV in. So Ember is a little bit uncommon here. Unfortunately, with this floor plan, there's just not necessarily a lot of other places that they could put it. But remember, when you're laying in bed, you've now got a TV directly across from you. And, and that's kind of the thing. That TV, yeah, during the day, if you're using the sofa, it feels kind of um, in the wrong spot. But when you're sitting at the full-time sofa where we're at right now, it starts to make a little bit more sense. Now, I wanted to get you up here and look at a couple other details real quick. Um, like the little kind of small headboard shelf things here, I don't think they're big enough for a CPAP machine or anything like that. Um, I just wanted you to get to see that space. I've kind of forgotten to showcase that a, a few times in the past. Um, and I think I'll actually jump up here to kind of give you the old Burt Reynolds demonstration. <whistles> By the way, how many people actually get the Burt Reynolds pose reference? Um, Smokey and his bandit, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> so like I said, 60 by 80 true queen. So to give you the size check first, you know, here I am six foot plus laying down on this thing. 
But what's nice, because it's a full 60 inches wide, a lot of single axle campers are a narrow body, uh, are a narrow bed, it means that there's extra room up here. So if there's a couple of you, you can sleep better. Um, or if you got a big dog or a little dog, I don't know what it is about little dogs, but holy cow, can they occupy a lot of space very quickly. And like I said earlier, we have a great line of sight on the TV now. Now, admittedly, if I am going to be laying here watching TV, laying flat, I'm going to be really cranking my neck. But it it's right there. There's not much. There's just... I don't know if anyone has a better idea where you could put the TV in this one. I don't know where else you could do it any better. I've heard some people mention a drop-down ceiling mount TV. I think my only concern with that is in the daytime, then you're having a V8 moment uh, with this thing. Now, I also want to show you how you put this away because it is a type of bendy bed, um, which does make replacing the mattress with something else potentially a little bit tricky. I like to scoot it forward a little bit first. As you're doing this though, I really exercise going slow. Don't do this when you're in a big panic yank so that you're not getting hooked on like the window or the TV knob or something like that. I could see that happening. Um, then uh, this part right here is kind of nice. There's a like a baggage door latch that uh, it just captures right in place and then you're good to go. Then uh, this is just a jackknife sofa. So when this flips up, if you want it to flip up, that's the thing. If you don't want to use this as a Murphy Day sofa, you don't have to. And somebody mentioned when uh, the bed's down, they can see a gap um, above the sofa where the bed's not supported. This platform is fully structural. You don't have to worry about that. Now, if you want to do a top rope off the, uh, the sofa to the bed, yeah, you're going to break it. But you're going to break anything in a camper if you're doing that. So I don't think that really qualifies as a problem. We do have the simulated cinema seating here. There's also a little hidden armrest storage on both sides. Great place to kind of keep your phone out of the way. Something else I'll show you over here too. There's like a whole bunch of plugs and switches and all kinds of things going on in this place. All like very close and conveniently located to you, which I, I think is kind of nice. What do you think about this? Now, um, below the sofa, below a lot of Murphy sofas, there's storage. Ember, um, because their systems are a little bit different, they had to kind of repurpose some things in a different fashion. Um, and uh, over here, what you see is like, it's it's actually recessed down into this composite floor, that extra deep storage tub right there. That is there to make room if you choose to add the uh, Ember Solar Max Solar Package from the factory. By the way, that package is not something you can typically like easily upfit after the fact. If someone's handy with electric stuff, they probably could, but... Um, it changes the electric system on this RV from a fundamental base level. And I'll try to leave you a video on that, uh, in the, a link in the description to show you more. This is all the stuff I was telling you about. Both sides of bed, household, USB outlets. Um, and then you've got uh, a light switch down there and a dimmer switch. That actually is for a, uh, a light switch um, above the uh, bed itself. And if I kick that on a little bit, there you go. I, you can kind of see that kicking on and off. But on a dimmer... You can bring it up, bring it down a little bit as you need to. And in point of fact, basically all of the lights in here are on a uh, dimmer switch. Now, the lights aren't actually flickering. That's a, a funny little effect I've noticed on camera sometimes. Um, I'm not using a tricky fish eye wide angle lens. So I'm actually going to work my booty outside this uh, entry door to give you, you know, as much of a big picture look at this uh, as possible. I don't personally maybe i'm making too much of it am i making too much of a big deal about this i don't like fisheye lenses because i feel like it's giving you a distorted view of the rv and i want you to have a better idea of like what it actually looks and feels like now storage is always uh an important thing in an rv especially the smaller the rig is the harder it is to get good storage in it um and i think for this type of floor plan, they did about as good as they could have done. That chunk of space under that uh, one sofa being awful nice. But you might wonder, okay, well, with no dinette, do I lose the storage that would be under the dinette? And the answer is no, you don't. You basically just gain a whole second storage chest. And if you notice down there, you actually see the little hideaway dinofa table stored. So, you know, when it is sandwich time, when it's peanut butter jelly time, you, you still got a spot that you can plop the kids down and grab a bite tea. Or, again, if you're solo or couples camping and not using this just as a family bunkhouse. If you're using that for storage space or something over here, that could very easily be like maybe a little laptop workstation or something like that. 
but you might notice it actually has a second bracket over here. You could put that table in either position if you wanted to, and where I think it can be potentially very helpful. Um, it, and, and again, this is an outside of the box kind of thought. I'm not saying it's a perfect solution, but let's be Frank, let's be George, let's be whoever you want to be. This thing has about jack squat for counter space. So if you are doing some serious prep work and someone is sitting back here on the front sofa where I'm at or day lounging, that table may be able to function as some extra kind of extended um, countertop space right there. I don't, I'm not saying it's a perfect idea. I'm saying that it, it could work for some folks. Now, that being said, what it lacks for counter space, it has surprisingly good kitchen storage. Now, normally, when you don't have a, uh, a big countertop, you don't usually have room for big cabinetry or anything like that, but they really maximized and used the space intelligently down here, giving you quadruple drawers down to the floors over here, which is fantastic. Um, it maybe kind of lacks a little bit of a wastebasket space. I just think that's kind of par for the course for a little model like this. Um, but, you know, in terms of, like, having drawerage galore, they did a good job there. And that, by the way, is a 12-volt DC compressor fridge on those. Very travel-safe and fast, fast cooling. Now, there's another bit of kitchen storage over here, which is really nice to see, but I got kind of a love-hate thing going on with it. I love that they included, basically, a floor-to-ceiling pantry over here. I really dislike when storage doesn't have doors on it. That being said, small vertical toothpick doors like that kind of wedged in between the bathroom wall and the the uh, the 12 volt fridge, which the face, the profile does stick out a little bit. Doors are really hard to put in there and be functional. So I, I guess I kind of get why they didn't do it. Um, I would probably come up with some of those little like um, extendo rods to kind of keep the, uh, the stuff in place. That, oh, I was about to hop in the bathroom and forget the bunks. I'm glad I looked over there. Anyway. Porcelain foot flush stool, nice premium feature there. That being said, it is good that this RV is um, seven and a half foot wide because that allowed them to do things like put a sink in the bathroom. But as you see, if you've got long legs like mine, it does mean the leg room is a little tricky. And I was doing just a little bit of that twist them up bathroom yoga uh, in here. Big corner medicine cabinet behind that backlit morning mirror. Not to mention, um, if I, yeah, I do have it lit up. You've got the little ember glow lighting up up here for a little night light to navigate. There's similar amber colored lighting um, by the, uh, the, the entry door. And one switch can activate both the bathroom light and the switch by the, or the light by the door. But what's kind of cool here is uh, you can also like still operate them individually if you want to. Big shower in a small camper, too. That's the thing. Um, sometimes there's a couple little points in this RV where its best quality is also its greatest liability. I love that they put all these big features in here, but that does mean sometimes it gets a little tight in some spots. Little shower miser there for some off-grid water conservation. And uh, to suck the hair off your head, uh, which if you've seen my balding head, you know might be true. Uh, it comes standard with the bigger vent fan here. Now, let me back up. Again, I almost forgot to talk about the bunk space here. They've done the... Uh, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. They've done the testing. Um, these are 300-pound rated single space bunks uh, and 600-pound rated in embers for the double size bunk. So kind of keep that in mind. Separate curtains for the upper and lower bunk is kind of cool. And then uh, if I get you kind of around the corner here, I like what they did. They gave us a couple USB. I think USB plugs in bunks, first of all, the 12 volt power and for battery use is cool. I think they're personally more useful than household outlets, but that's kind of just my impression based on how my family happens to camp. What do you folks think about that? Would you rather have household outlets in there, USB plugs? Like if you had to choose one or the other, which would you rather have uh, in that bunk area? And the fun stuff starts right up front here on these. So first of all, we are seven and a half foot wide. A lot of single axle campers are only seven foot wide. Some are seven and a half, some are eight foot wide, but uh, Ember is a 90 inch platform uh, is the industry term for that. And I also wanna direct your attention back up top where we started there. Remember that stargazer kind of skylight is? You see how there's like a little wind fairing? There's like a little wind guard right there. So that when you're going down the road, it helps direct that, uh, you know, the headwinds 
uh, up above the skylight, which again has like five twist locks on the inside, so it's not inclined to go popping up anyway, but they've done an extra thing just to kind of make sure that's not an issue. Then when we look at the skeleton on this, uh, you, you see how it has like this almost metallic exoskeleton around all the corners. Uh, that is powder coated aluminum, and then they have uh, actually laser cut the uh, you know ember logo and those little wing outs up top. But you know what I kind of thought about that? Uh, if you are gonna go off pavement and off grid, uh, you know out in the, uh, the the sticks away from the bricks. Sometimes there's low hanging tree branches and whatnot, and having a little shield right there, a little fin to help direct that up away from your skylight, that is pretty darn handy. Um, now, as long as we're uh, talking about structure on this, there's essentially like not a splinter of wood in the skeleton structure of an Ember RV. Um, the, uh, the roof uh, and the sidewalls are the same. They're aluminum framed, they're Asdell inside and outside, block foam insulated and aluminum structured. Effectively, they're like all aluminum and composite type materials. So God forbid there ever was any sort of water penetration or which is fancy talk for leak. There's like nothing in the structure of this that can really rot, you know, which is kind of cool. Um, then the floor, the floor is Asdell top and bottom. It's aluminum framed, but it's this extra thick one inch uh, composite core flooring. That's the same thing that Airstream uses. It's just twice as thick. Uh, and it actually has greater screw retention as compared to plywood. Then, below the uh, the corners of the exoskeleton, they're actually using like a turnabon tape instead of just common like putty, so the stuff doesn't dry rot out over time. Now the awning on this sometimes looks a little crooked um, because the RV has a north south, it has a front to back sweep as opposed to a side to side vault. So the awning is mounted level. The roof is just actually not level. Now I want to hit on something right now that we're seeing in this video. Normally on these embers, you would find those uh, dual pane, like really noise dampening uh, Euro style windows. We are looking at frameless windows right there, which is an option that Ember had been kind of uh, considering exploring by some popular request, but there has been a little bit of a supply uh, challenge related to those European windows right now. So at the time of this filming, the dual, uh, the uh, uh, frameless windows are just basically what these are coming with. Um, in time, they will definitely get back to those Euro windows. That's just a, a temporary thing. We've got Goodyear Wrangler tires right here, 87 mile an hour rated, and this comes standard with factory TPMS so that you can check your uh, you know tire pressure or temperature when you're going down the road. You can even set customizable alerts on that to ping your phone uh, in case the tires go beyond the threshold that you're comfortable with. But you know what's really hard? Stabilizing a single axle camper because you can try to shove like wheel chocks on either side, but they always find a little bit of a way to wiggle loose. So Ember said, we got a solution for that. They built on a wheel chock on this thing. And one of the things I think is cool is if you do lock that down onto the tire, you could put a padlock behind it and effectively secure your camper, which I think is very, very neat. It's something you just don't find a lot of. And this is one of the first embers I've seen that doesn't have any sort of outside camp kitchen, but it does still come with the handy little propane cooker hooker coming off the side right there, in case you do want to do a little bit of grilling. Now down below here, as I said, embers are now passing zero to 100 degree testing. They went to the Truma chambers. They've proven it, they've tested it. Um, they even went back and did a couple improvements to get a little bit better results after they even got the, the go ahead. So down below here, of course, it's enclosed as you see. And this thing has huge holding tank capacities for a single axle camper. Um, the, uh, you're like, what, 50, 30, 30 or something like that on your holding tanks? Um, actually, if I remember, I'll, I'll, I'll put the spec chart back over here on the left side of the screen again so you can kind of see that for yourself a little bit. But very good holding tank capacities if you are going to spend some time out of the parks. Um, the holding tanks obviously enclosed. There's radiant barrier layer uh, material down there, and they have 12 volt tank heaters uh, on these standard, which is cool. Now, uh, one of the things that's not standard is that uh, telescopic ladder that we're looking at off the back here, but that is obviously an available option on one of these. One of the things, uh, well, well, two of the things I like about it is first of all, it's like, it's a little bit annoying when you're putting it away, but it's a safety feature that I don't mind. Every single one of these rungs has an individual lockout. So like, you know, those two little thumb uh, pegs, these guys right here, you have to make sure every single rung is closed individually. And the reason that's important is let's say hypothetically, 
just for whatever reason, like I, you, magi you, you magically bump it, you didn't get it secure, whatever. If this one collapses, that will catch you. Some telescopic uh, ladders, telescopic, scopic, I don't know, anyway. Um, when they collapse, they, they all go down. Well, you don't have to worry about that here. And the way that it sticks up above the roof line, uh, folks, I climb a lot of roofs and it, sometimes it's sketchy. Having something to hold on to when you're making that ladder to roof transition is awesome. You see that we're backup camera ready as long as we're looking up top. We are also side camera ready with a full observation suite, uh, you know, uh, an available thing that you could apply to one of these. Additionally, they have turn signal safety lighting. Um, if you're not familiar with that, if you're familiar with Jayco J Smart lighting, it's effectively the same thing. If you flip on, say, your left hand turn signal, more than just that tail light blinks so that uh, people like me who maybe have zoned out when they're going down the road, like I have a bad habit of that. I go down the road and I just start going on mental autopilot and I need someone to talk to me to keep me kind of conscious and awake. Well, the extra lights blinking on the side of that RV can kind of help catch the attention of some idiot like me and keep everybody a little more safe. Uh, plus, we have reverse lighting for when you're backing into a site, which is kind of nice. Um, 300 pound rated accessory hitch on the back right here. That is something I see a lot of single axle campers lack. And often it's because they don't have a strong enough chassis to be able to sustain the weight of an accessory hitch on the back. But that, uh, that box tube steel chassis that is the custom engineered and required basically to handle the stress of that um, trailing arm suspension and potential off-road stresses, well, it can handle it, basically. You know, that's one of the cool things about these. You, 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 it just opens up opportunities to go and explore new places. But this I thought was cool, and it's another area where they've done a little bit more. So a, there's a lot of cargo bunkhouses out there, but a lot of them lack a window in the entry door. This doesn't, it has a full viewing window, but they still included the privacy shade here, even on the bunk window, which really surprised me. And then, uh, I don't know that I've ever seen any manufacturer include a screen door just for the cargo bunk area. I don't think I've ever seen that done. And where I thought about that is when you are camping off grid, maybe you want to leave the entry door open with the screen door, and then you leave this back here open with the screen door, and you can just get some sweet airflow going through this thing. And even this is an anti-slam door. So you can do the Miss Piggy, and it ain't going uh, anywhere at all. Now, the, the one kind of wonky thing about this cargo bunk, it's the same on the Rockwood Geo Pro I've found. If you want to flip the bunk up, you first have to take the mattress off, which isn't a big deal. You can always just put it on the top bed for transit, which is effectively what I did here. Um, or well, let's say you don't need this as a bunkhouse. You can leave this in cargo mode all the time and just have a double, double thick, quadruple thick mattress up top. But they use the same kind of quick latch mechanism here that they use on their Murphy bed. And it's just one hand, simple and easy. I love it. This is all aluminum structured. Uh, <laughs> you know, they, they just go crazy above and beyond uh, in so many areas right here. And like I said, this is something where if you have some big cargo, if you got grills or like I said, folding e-bikes or kids bikes, you could definitely get a couple of those things in here. Um, it's uh, something that I've, uh, again, I've tested on smaller campers, and I know for a fact, if it can work on those, it can work on these. That's uh, just kind of a, uh, you know, without a doubt sort of thing right there. Now, um, weaving our way around here, one of the other things that's nice about this is they do sit higher with that bigger suspension and tire package. So things like your uh, your sewer outlet, your um, uh, your stabilizer jacks, four corner stabilizer jacks, they're not hanging down low where they're uh, inclined to get clipped and ripped off the RV. And they're even giving us a separate little sewer hose caddy right there. So you don't gotta get pink eye by mixing your black tank stuff with your uh, camping stuff. Nothing like just, Rest in your arms on your favorite camping chair and then rubbing your eyes and bam, pink eye. Nobody wants it. Now up front here, we have the optional gearbox up on the tongue. This is also powder coated aluminum. So uh, again, you know, if it gets hit by sticks and stones going down the road, it's not inclined to start rotting and corroding out, you know. Um, it does add a chunk of tongue weight and that is kind of one of the interesting things about the embers. You hear a lot of aluminum, composite, Asdell. It all sounds ultra light, it looks ultra light, but when you actually look at the big, thick, heavy structure that they've put on this, especially the chassis, uh, it is not uh, an ultralight RV. 
it is actually fairly bulky and chunky for no uh, bigger than it is. Um, and uh, I, I actually, I've got a cousin that way. Um, <laughs> But uh, keep that in mind, especially on the hitch weight when you're getting it paired up uh, with a potential tow vehicle. Now, one of the neat things I like about it is it's effectively structural. So if you want to stand on the top of it so that you can like, you know, look up here or clean something off or do whatever, you know, on the front by that sky or uh, stargazer kind of skylight thing, you can do that. Um, but, uh, and I wonder if you couldn't, hmm, I haven't verified this. I don't know if the dimensions work out. I wonder if you couldn't mount like a little portable generator there or something like that. Not sure. Uh, 40 pounds of, uh, propane available with an auto changeover regulator, kind of handy. And then we get over here back on the door side and I look at the thickness of the baggage door, first of all, so that you don't have like a big thermal break. Uh, you know, uh, well, you, I guess you do have a thermal break right under your bed sleeping space so you can sleep more comfortably. You've got the little drawbridge style kind of drop down right here. And it's, it's interesting that the, uh, you, you can, you can unclip that if you want, but the fact that it's adjustable so that what if you're parked on really unlevel ground and for some reason you wanted to level this out you could actually extend or shrink out those uh little clips down there to always have a little level platform here to do stuff and what do you guys think about this the charge controller located here in that pass-through cavity personally I'd rather see that uh, maybe inside the RV somewhere, but it is Bluetooth enabled at least. So if you wanted to, you could, uh, you know, put that like, like, you could monitor it right off your phone is kind of what I'm saying. Sorry, I got distracted by a tractor over here. Now, remember you have that big storage tub on the inside um, because if you go with the Ember Max solar package, that is like used up basically that space with batteries and the whole charging system changes but at least you do have a, uh, a full-time front pass-through uh, going up here over to our uh, docking station. Right over here around this yonder way, basically. So uh, like a fifth wheel style Nautilus kind of docking center over here. And it's it's actually kind of smart. Um, you're like, well, why does it only have one of those little bronze fittings or brass fittings or whatever, not bronze, uh, instead of two? The idea here is that will feed like your water hose down through that little bitty access port right there. Um, but you should only be using one of these two things at a time. So it kind of makes sense that there's only one. They're basically helping you from screwing stuff up. And remember I talked about the cold camp ratings. You see where the tank poles are on this? All of our valves and all that stuff, that is all enclosed in here where it's protected and heated. And did you see that little coily sprayer hose off the door side of the RV? Well, you could use that out here for a full outside shower. And next to that, we are prepped and ready for portable side mount solar, but they had a bright idea and they put some solar up top as well. Right idea, solar. <laughs> anyway, what are we looking at? Factory standard 190 watt go power solar package here. Um, although there is the Ember Max solar option where uh, effectively almost all of the empty open space that you see up here on this roof could be occupied by two additional 190 watt panels giving us a 570 watt package 3000 watt inverter charging system and all kinds of different stuff i will try to remember to leave a link to the ember max solar packages details in the video description where you can learn a little bit more about that but notice like i said the roof basically is a sidewall it's it's not rubberized it's just a fiberglass roof Asdell top layer, bottom layer, uh, high density block foam packed and aluminum framed. It, it's it's a composite roof, composite walls and floor. Um, heavy duty, like box tube steel structure. This thing is built. You've got that powder coated, uh, you know, aluminum exoskeleton. And on top here, they add an extra layer of sealant just because, just to help prevent any sort of hiccups or problems or anything like that. And then uh, back here, remember you got that big XL vent fan. And again, with the ladder option, I like how it does stick up past the top a little bit to give you something to grab a hold of. Again, uh, ladder safety is one of those things. Um, I, uh, I I joke about you know being sketchy on roofs. I'm always very careful up here whenever I I, uh, I can be, and I I'm like hands and knees very slow making that transition from the roof to the ladder. Having something to hold on to, guys, is a hugely beneficial thing. But what I was getting at 
is this is prepped and ready with those little ears that stick up if you wanted to uh, apply one of those uh, like Camco or Max Air vent covers, she's all set to do so. And something I haven't done a good job talking about is Ember's warranty. The way they say their warranty is easy is one, two, three. Um, it is a one-time transferable warranty, which is kind of cool. Most RV warranties don't transfer, the, so that says already they're putting a lot of confidence in this product. It's a two-year RV warranty, and then it has a three-year structural coverage. They've got more guarantees and peace of mind going into this than pretty much anything else I've seen, I would say, in this class, but I think you could reasonably argue that Ember's almost defining a class of their own here. You know what I mean? I, like I said, they're... they're uh, <laughs> What do we even call them? What do you, what classification do we give this? You know, some little miniature luxury off-road glamper, something like that. Like I, I can't, I cannot find a bucket or a pigeonhole that they fit into. And I'd love to hear from you guys. Also, let me know what you like about this one. Let me know what you dislike. I would say, let me know if you appreciate the road mode function, but this RV with no slide pretty much is road mode all the time, which is also kind of nice. You can just pull in, drop the hitch, and you're camping, baby. There ain't a whole lot of setup that goes into one of these. So let me know what you think. Check the link in the video description for pricing and availability. And drop me any questions that you might have. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Bye.